This R. Askredit user asks. What is something that traumatized you as a kid? My parents enrolled four-year-old me in the swimming class at their fitness club. At the end of every class the instructor would make us jump off the diving board regardless of whether or not we knew how to swim. If we didn't know how. She'd let us sink all the way to the bottom before she'd swim down to grab us and bring us back up. She thought that would teach us how to swim out of pure necessity. I guess? My parents were totally cool with that somehow. But I wasn't. I did not learn to swim. Instead I learned that I couldn't always count on adults to help me. And every time my feet would hit the bottom. I'd start walking towards the steps on the shallow end of the pool hoping that I would reach them before I drowned. I can still remember the way my eyes and lungs burned. And the feeling of the weird textured surface on the bottom of the pool. Only one child actually learned how to swim that year. But I'm not sure how many were in the class. I still have a fear of water because I know what it feels like to almost drown. And I'm still mad at the adults for just standing around watching. TLDR. My swimming teacher made four-year-olds jump off the diving board and sink to the bottom because she thought it would help us swim. It didn't. I was enrolled in a class exactly like this at the same age. They'd also dunk us underwater so that we'd learn to hold our breath and ID always swallow, inhale water. It was horrible. The total lack of control and fear. And how we didn't realize we could just refuse to do those things because we were kids. I remember the feeling of doom because I felt I had no choice. Of course I have to jump into this pool and almost drown because adults are telling me to. And the instructors were really impatient and cruel. So sad. I was talking to my mom about it just a couple of days ago actually. I was in a swim class like that too. Except I was younger than everyone else and the only girl. So the other kids would push me into the deep end just to be dicks. My parents paid hundreds of dollars for the instructor to push me into the water. And when that didn't work. They sent me to swim lessons at summer camp. Where they threw me off of a boat and into a massive lake instead of just pushing me into a pool. I didn't learn to swim there. Either. And was at least 12 before I finally figured it out. Was in social studies class and because it was social studies there was hardly anything to teach which meant free time for the teacher to do whatever he wanted. He mostly played us YouTube videos but one day IDK how we got to it he played audio of a 911 call of a person whose friend got attacked by a monkey. Apparently she thought it was a good idea to have a chimpanzee as a pet. Even though they're like three times stronger than the average Joe. It was horrible. Hearing her screams of horror as she says to the operator, he just ripped her face off always stuck with me and I refuse to listen to that audio again. I hate chimps to this day. I remember watching this exact same thing on Animal Planet. They showed pictures of the guy posing with the chimpanzee. The guy lived and he was on the show as well as the friend. The dude's face was seriously messed up. Must have been a different occurrence then. As I specifically remember it was a woman that got attacked. I heard of another similar incident though about a guy who brought a chimp a birthday cake. The gate was left open on accident and the other chimps were jealous so they attacked him. Messed his face up and ripped his DK off IIRC. I frequently underwent surgeries when I was younger. Which meant getting IVs in my hand a lot. These always hurt despite nurses insisting they wouldn't. They'd give me a numbing salve beforehand. I grew up with a pretty intense fear of needles which didn't really diminish until last year because of this. My dad took me on a hunting trip. I did well throughout the entire trip. Didn't even flinch when he started gutting the deer. But we went to this butchery or STH and someone had requested the deer head. The lady working there knelt and started cutting off this deer's head right in front of me. I was seven years old. And I. Lost. It. My dad had to do some serious damage control. I only just recently realized it and I had a full on hyperventilating panic attack. Getting spanked as a less than. Five year old traumatized me. 
The shame, humiliation, and fear of my dad mixed in with religion and fear of HL. And subsequently being homeschooled. We were the most well-behaved kids because we were absolutely terrified and learned how to hide all our wrongdoings. It fd with my sexual identity. My overall confidence. Anxiety. Depression. Etc. I recently sorted through all this with the aid of my sister who felt the same way. As well as three months off work to think. And confronted my parents and they felt horrible and apologized and I'm on a new chapter. I'm glad you have your sister and things are getting better. Seeing kids on the streets with missing limbs and eyes like it was normal. My parents' toxic relationship. Breaking things. Screaming. Blood. Threats of murder. Sneaking the house phone to my room in case I had to call the cops overnight. Staying up all night looking under the crack of the door to make sure they didn't hurt each other. Then getting in trouble for falling asleep in class the next day. OMG that's insane. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Thanks. If I ever have kids one day my goal is to make sure their childhood is the exact opposite. And the happiest it can possibly be. I feel like it would be an awesome gift to give another human because I know what it's like to not have that. Amen. Same here. Where to start? Where to start? Abusive dad. Neighbor shot my dog. Bullied. Going camping. Couldn't afford to pay the power bill. But on the bright side. I was diagnosed with autism at 7. So that helped explain some things. But still. By then I wasn't in the right headspace. Oh. And the thing with the dog? At age 5 I watched my mom walk up the front porch steps with him dead and blood all over her crying while my grandma was hysterical. Good times. I saw a homeless man chop a can in half with the blade part of a paper cutter thing as we were driving through the underpasses on my way to my cousin's birthday party. Edit. Whoops sorry. I meant. Cat. Comma. Not. Can. Well. I don't see WH. C's edit. Dot. Oh. Oh my. Once I saw a homeless guy sitting on a bucket with no pants or underwear on wiping his AS between his legs with a grocery bag. I'm pretty sure I could see the ST on the bag. One of my neighbors was wearing sunglasses. I put them on when we were in our house. My parents told me to take them off because I wouldn't be able to see with them on. My stupid FG 5 year old brain interpreted it as, if you put those on you'll go blind. So I would spend days sleepless because I thought I would wake up the next day and no longer be able to see. Oh no. Little kids take things so literally. I remember my mom saying, don't run across the street. You'll get hit by a car. I thought she meant that running. Rather than walking. Across the street would invite a car to appear out of thin air and hit me. Also. I once heard my friend's aunt tell her to avoid stepping on a slug because then I'll never be able to get that out from between your toes. I thought if you stepped on a slug, you would permanently have slug goo between your toes for the rest of your life. When I was 11 having to talk my mother out of suicide behind a locked door when I was sick. Being hit by a car and being thrown two lanes across the road when I was 15. Having to attack my drunk stepfather from beating on my mother when I was 14. Helping my sister find her cut off ear when she was bleeding everywhere. She got her ear back. When I was 12. A kid who was 16 threatening to slit my throat then pulling out a switchblade when I was 13. Getting jumped by a group of 5 kids when I was 13. Having to mercy kill both a bird and a rabbit when I was because wild cats had torn it up 12. Getting T-boned by a drunk driver when I was 15. Having to watch my childhood dog be put down because she got cancer when I was 9. Also I am not even an adult yet so fun. When I was a kid. I read the Coraline graphic novel. It was based on the book. As the movie either hadn't come out yet or had just come out. Let me tell you. It was terrifying to a kid. It made me too scared to watch the movie for years. I only just recently watched the movie for the first time. Well. 
My earliest memory is from when I was three. And it was of my brother attempting suicide. I remember coming home to the duplex we lived in. And my mom saw a drawer open and pills were scattered all over the floor. She called for my brother. But no answer. I follow her to his room and see him sprawled out on the floor. Covered in vomit. I also remember visiting him in the hospital and my mom remarking on how she doesn't know how I could like the hospital pizza. Lol. But. He was in a coma for about two weeks. And in a psych ward a few weeks after that. He's currently alive and fine though. Crazily enough. Even worse stuff happened throughout my childhood. But that's my first messed up memory that still sticks with me. When I got older. Couldn't blame my brother for what he did. Because I tried the same. On a lighter note. When I was in the psych ward. He came to visit me. He brought a thesaurus. And I was like. WTF? Why would you bring me a thesaurus in the hospital? Then he went to the pages he had previously marked. And started reading me all the synonyms for PS. Tallywhacker. SG. Salami. Wiener. PR. Manhood. Stick of love. Etc. Then he goes to another page. And finds the synonyms for masturbation. Playing with herself, his self. Choking the chicken. Flogging the bishop. Taming the snake. It was so simple. Yet it made me laugh my ass off when I was at a low point and I will never forget that. The thesaurus can be more fun than you think. Sounds like a good brother. When you've been at the bottom of that pit. You're more inclined to reach back into it and help pull someone out. One of my favorites from a show with many great scenes. Link. Eating fish. I got a bone stuck in my throat when I was 7 or 8. Since then. I can't stand the smell or taste of fish. Severe neglect. I was about 10 and on a holiday with my parents. We were in a rather crowded wave pool at a water park. A baby bat fell in. I tried to wade against the people and the waves to rescue it. Wasn't fast enough. Saw it went under. Stomped by multiple people. Floated back up crushed. Then someone went ew and flicked it into a bush. Rest of the trip my dad kept reminding me that couldn't save it. You should have seen how slow you were going. That thing died because you were so slow. Quote. I still dream about it sometimes. What the actual fk. That is in no way your fault. Wow. Your dad is a bit of a dk. It's good that you have a heart and tried to help a small creature. That's genuinely awful. I had a similar experience with a baby bird around the same age and it was oddly more traumatizing than the actual traumatic events I experienced at the time. Your dad sounds like a huge dick, you were a young child who cared about a living creature and tried to save it. He should have comforted you instead of mocking your efforts. An old lady, innocently in her mind, coaxed me and my little sister to come talk to her at the little cafe in the grocery store while my dad was in line ordering us food. We freaked out and started screaming and crying. She was old had oxygen and probably just wanted to be nice but it was horrifying to us. Getting bullied. Having no friends. My parents constant fighting and and their neglecting behavior towards me and my brother. When I was a little girl. I watched a man's head get basically guillotined with a guardrail. He was speeding and weaving through traffic and he wasn't wearing any helmet or protection. My dad commented that he better slow down or he'll get somebody killed. Well, the guy ended up losing control of his motorcycle and there was blood all over the asphalt and his head was not too far from his lifeless body. I still remember the facial expression on his decapitated head. I too saw a severed head as a kid. My parents were funeral directors. And we lived in a three-story Victorian house built in the 1880s. We lived in the top two stories. And the ground floor was the funeral home. Some guy who I remember being named Mark committed suicide by lying his neck across some railroad tracks. And the train cut his head off. Pretty cleanly. Actually. Anyway. His body came on a zip-up gurney. And his head was included with the body in a plastic bag. 
He had dark brown hair. I was really young. Like three to five years old. I was wearing navy sweatpants with red and white piping along the outside seams. I came down the stairs. There were separate public entrances to the funeral home. But there was also a staircase off our kitchen that lead down to the embalming room of all places. I saw the head in the bag and then ran back upstairs to our living room crying with horror. Not sure why my parents let me go down there for that at such a young age but that's what happened. I had so many nightmares as a kid about dead bodies coming to life downstairs and killing my mom. Or threatening to kill my whole family. There's a horror movie about a family that moves into an old funeral home and ST gets mad scary. What is it called? I tell you what. Haunting of Hill House really got me. That old house was first a hospital. And then a funeral home for two to three generations. I am not really sure how to reconcile my atheism with my sincere belief that my house was haunted. But it was. Without a doubt. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos.